Hi and welcome to Euro Channel. Sometimes orthopedic health problems may disguise as urological problems. In this video I am going to explain to you how hip conditions cause pain in areas you wouldn't think are possible. It is therefore important for urologists to have some knowledge in orthopedics including orthopedic examination techniques and biomechanics. My name is Stefan Buntrock. I am not only a urologist and sexologist, I also specialized in sports medicine with a focus on golf medicine. As a certified expert of the Titleist Performance Institute, I give insight and tips into the biomechanics of the golf swing and pain resulting from certain swing characteristics on one of my other YouTube channels, which is called Golf MD. Check it out. Okay, now the reason why urologists need some understanding in musculoskeletal disorders is that the lower urinary tract is connected to the pelvic floor and the pelvic floor inserts at the bony structures of our skeleton. I've been working in office urology for a couple of years now and contrary to the work in hospital, pelvic pain makes up a substantial part of the daily workload. Pelvic pain comprises testicular pain, prostate pain, urethral pain, bladder pain and a lot of other pain syndromes. The reasons for chronic pelvic pain can be numerous, but in my experience a lot of the cases result from pelvic floor overactivity. Pelvic floor overactivity might be psychosomatic. We all have our personal conflicts and some of us press or gnash their teeth during sleep while others activate their pelvic floor. But pelvic floor overactivity may also have other reasons. Here is an actual case of mine, a young guy in his 20s who had been to doctors for 10 years because of pain that once started in the left lower abdomen and consecutively spread into the left testicle and left inner thigh. Also the lower back and hip area of the left side were painful, especially with physical activity. Additionally, he had increasing problems with post micturition dribble and was experiencing uncomfortable pressure in his anal area. Defecation was a problem too. He always felt that he couldn't empty his bowel and had to go for number two after each meal. There were also some sexual problems with diminished sexual desire and a prolonged ejaculation latency time. The orthopedist he had been to had diagnosed him with a pelvic tilt and had noted a difference in leg length of 1.5 centimeters, so he had prescribed him an insole for the shoe of the shorter leg. The urologist didn't find anything wrong and neither did the specialist in internal medicine who performed a colonoscopy. He was now attending to an osteopath who was working on his left lower abdomen with some mild results. Since nothing could be found, he had been told that his pain was most probably psychosomatic and that he should be treated accordingly. When I examined him for the first time, I noted muscular trigger points in the lower abdomen and pelvic floor that were suggestive of an overactive pelvic floor. Post micturition dribble and testicular pain fit as well to this diagnosis as did the difficulties with defecation. At night, there were hardly any problems, which I also frequently see with pelvic floor overactivity. There was one more thing I noted in physical examination. Since I often use orthopedic examination techniques in pain patients, I got some findings suspicious of a hip problem. I then started to treat him for pelvic floor overactivity with shock waves and he had massive trigger points in his perineal area as expected and as always in these cases the trigger points and pain got much better after a few sessions but only for a few days which is rather untypical and with the perineal pain vanishing the hip area on both sides more and more came into focus. We then arranged for an appointment with another orthopedist and I called him up beforehand and told him my findings and asked him to send my patient for an MRI of the hip area. Here's what they found. Bilateral hip dysplasia and a so-called pistol grip deformity in the thigh neck causing him a hip impingement. These are not the original pictures. I got him from Radiopedia with courtesy of Dr. Mohamed Momeni and Dr. Samir Benudina. Hip dysplasia is usually a congenital condition, in other words, something you are born with. If not detected in infancy, 
they lead to pain issues similar to what my patient experienced because the hip joint is not working properly. Since it is a so-called mobile joint because it moves in three planes, a dysfunction in this area will have to be compensated by other joints, typically the lower back. The lower back, however, is a stable joint that doesn't like to move in three planes. It kind of is able to, but guess what happens next? Back pain. Did you know that back pain very often is misdiagnosed? In a large percentage, it is not the back which is the problem, but the hips. And clearly, in my patient, this was the case and the hips being his main problem. The pelvic floor overactivity developed as a reaction to the hip dysplasia and impingement, which he was actually describing to me in his first consultation. He said it felt as if something was being constricted inside. I thought this case might be interesting to you and give you some insight into my daily work because we urologists see a lot of patients with pain in the bladder, the testicles or the perineal area. And one must not forget that sometimes pelvic floor overactivity is caused by problems belonging to the field of orthopedics. Pelvic pain is a difficult and complicated area. Chronic abacterial prostatitis is the typical thing in urology, but it is an ill-defined condition that we don't have a full understanding of. Due to my experiences in treating these problems with shockwave therapy, I have come to understand that the prostate may be the problem, but very often it is not. If you want to know more about pelvic pain and the pelvic floor, have a look at these two videos. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.